Before we get started, put down the knives, get off of Twitter, and take a breath. I'm not calling the end of the bear market. If I could do that with a high degree of accuracy, I'd have my jet. Wouldn't even be doing this pod, and I'd be done staring at red and green stocks flashing across my screen five days a week. But at some point, we're going to have to have a conversation about what the day after this bear market is going to look like. Here's what I'm doing. Welcome to The Money Runner. I'm David Nelson. A lot of talking heads seem to believe the aftermath of this bear market is going to look like some sort of dystopian wasteland. However, others will understand, like I do, that the next 10 years will be a lot different than the last 10, and that most of the basic principles that drive returns on risk assets will come back. In other words, you're going to need something more than a story and a smile to raise capital. We can debate, you and I, the depth of the bear market and how much further stocks can fall, but what isn't up for debate is that a lot of the damage is already done. Coming into this week, well over 50% of stocks in the S&P 500 are in bear market territory. 100 of those stocks are down over 40% year to date, and that's on the heels of a four and three quarter percent return last week. 70% of the S&P's largest sector technology is in bear market territory with advanced micro and NVIDIA leading the way. Consumer discretionary, even worse. The poster child of growth at the wrong price, ARK Innovation Fund, is down 77% from the highs. That takes you all the way back to 2017. I get it. We're in a bear market, but I don't believe this is the end of capitalism. There will be a day after. The bears will overstay their welcome just as the bulls did in 2021. All right, let's take a break. Let's look at the charts. Let's see what happened today. Important day today. The S&P took out 3,800, an important level, helps break the downtrend. I wish we had closed above 3,800, but we closed just shy of that. What I like about this rally that started a couple of weeks ago is that outside day at the bottom. From bottom to top, that was a 6% move. And we didn't go straight up. There was a lot of back and fill, a lot of price discovery. On its own, all of these things are a good sign, but of course, we don't live in a vacuum. Let's see where the market is at the end of this week on the heels of some pretty big earnings reports. In the meantime, it's prudent to start exploring what your playbook is going to look like on the other side of this. For starters, the entry and exit prices, they matter again. In the last 10 years, if you got the first half of that trade wrong, the Fed had your back and you could keep buying the dip all the way down. Eventually, the market made you whole. When the cost of capital is zero or close to it, those that take the most risk make the rest of us look stupid. Those that do it with leverage, they become gods. This goes for venture capital as well. However, the pain in this asset class, I think, is just beginning. Most of us, and I'm talking about money managers, we live in a mark-to-market world. What do I mean by that? Well, we buy stocks and bonds that are priced daily. Uh, I get a report card each and every day on how I'm doing. The general partner of a venture capital or private equity fund has wide discretion on the pricing of a liquid assets, which is most of the fund. I expect down rounds before the year is out. I'm not sure what the average Fed funds rate will be in the future, three, four, even 5%, but it isn't going to be zero. The bottom line is that there will be a cost to capital and investors once again have choices, even today. If you don't like what you see, the federal government is offering you 4.5% to sit the year out. Throw up that yield curve uh, chart, and let's zoom in on that. Take a look at the one year, 4.5%. In fact, if you ladder a portfolio from three months out to two years, you can average about 4.5% and have money dump coming due every three months. Technology, that'll flourish again, but the narrative or the story on its own isn't gonna be enough. Not even good management is gonna be enough. Even today, venture fund boards are pushing founders to shorten the runway and make sure they have a clear path to profitability. Revenue growth on its own isn't gonna cut it. All right, what's working this year? You got about 185 companies uh, in the S&P 500 up year to date. 
Uh, a lot of them are energy, certainly healthcare. That's been a great asset class, consumer staples. But energy, hands down the winner, the best sector this year. There's a reason for that. There's a structural deficit globally. Look at the setup. You got a Russian sociopath, Putin, cutting off Europe. OPEC, obviously not a friend. They're cutting off supply. And the administration has to put 186 million barrels of crude back into the SPR. There are 23 stocks in the XLE. That's the energy ETF. All of them are up. All of them are up this year. And some of these are lousy companies. Why take the security risk? Buy the XLE, or if you live in Canada, buy the XEG. That'll do the job. It's currently 5.3% of the S&P 500, and that's more than double what it was in 2020. The biggest of the names in that portfolio, Exxon, trades at eight times forward earnings with a 10% free cash flow yield. Europe is learning a very hard lesson, one that should not be lost on Americans. One last note, if markets have downside from here, it's gonna to have to come from the big five, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Tesla. Admittedly, all but Apple are in a bear market, but by definition, this is where the capital is. These five stocks represent 24% of the S&P 500 market cap. And while they're the biggest with formidable moats and large cash cushions, they aren't immune to economic forces. Tesla has already reported, and I've chosen to enter the reporting week underweight all of these names, except Tesla, which was sold in front of the quarter. And unfortunately, it wasn't a profitable trade. If you like the pod tonight, post a comment. We want to know what you have to say. Questions, I always get back. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. That's it for tonight. Thanks for joining. I'm David Nelson.